Hey guys, it's Sharon with the Britain Company, and I am here today with a tutorial for you, and a fairly quick one, and something kind of fun. Uh, we're gonna do a um, a Valentine mug rug, but this time with a little twist, a little Sharon twist. So, <laughs> uh, this is the one I made to show you. This is the first one. I think it turned out pretty well. I'm gonna try something a little different with the fabrics this time. Um, but on the back, here's the big twist. Instead of doing a back, ha cutting a backing and cutting, um, uh, and cutting the, um, the, um, something goes in between batting, the batting. Um, I am using a Dollar Tree drying mat. I thought about this the other day and I thought, why would you, you know, why not? Because it's already going to handle any of the, the um, you know, when it's hot or cold or, or uh, especially if it's wet. So why not? Uh, so this is what I'm making them out of today. So let's get started. I'll show you what we're doing. So let's start over here. Um, I've got my binding. This is actually, uh, my last one was two and a half. I, I certainly prefer to do my binding if I already have pre-cut strips of fabric, that just makes life so much easier. Uh, but I had to cut this one down. And so this is actually like two and three eighths by 42 inches the length of fabric. Uh, this one is approximately six and a half by six and a half. I won't need all of that. That I just, honestly, I just being lazy. I had that piece and I just didn't cut any further. Um, the, uh, here's a, the few other little pieces that we have. That's going to be my middle piece instead of my end. And then I'm going to use this great piece. Again, I just didn't bother to cut them down because I don't need to until I finish the project. And I'll show you in just a minute what we're talking about. Let me move those out of the way. Um, you can cut them down ahead of time. So if you're going to cut them ahead of time, the, uh, well, I'll have to show you because this is slightly different from the last one. Okay, I already have a straight line because I cut the last one. So with this next one, it's high enough so you can kind of see what I'm doing. With this piece, um, I don't need to worry about getting a straight line on it. I already have that. What I am going to do is I'm going to cut this piece, a piece out of this that is going to be 10 by six. That's gonna be my, let me see, I need a ruler. I put my ruler away. I don't know why I put my ruler away. Okay, this piece is gonna be 10 by six. I'm gonna roll over here for a second so I can see what I'm doing. I'm gonna hope, I probably should change the blade in my um, rotary knife, but I'm not going to. Um, okay, just being lazy. Let me do it this way. Measuring and set. So I'm just gonna line it up. And I'm not worried about the bottom line at the moment. I just want one straight line and this is going to be six inches. This is my width. So right about there, that should line up pretty well. I should have used one of my other rulers, but uh, again, they're too far away. <laughs> I, uh, this one's kind of messed up. I don't think you can see that right now, but that one's kind of messed up because um, I got spray starch on it and I have yet to figure out how to take the spray starch off. It just made a hot mess. Okay. So this piece would not be long enough to make another one unless I just wanted to cut the size down, which I could. I mean, there's your um, mug rugs can be, did I say we were doing a mug rug? <laughs> I don't think I used the term. Your mug rugs can be whatever size you want. 
Uh, okay, so now I'm just going to go ahead and line it up again. I'm not worried about this side right now. Now I just want something straight on this side, and then I can go from there. So I'm just gonna line it up. You can kind of see where the fibers actually embedded. I'm gonna have to take a um, Mr. Clean sponge just to push those off. There we go. And last side. All right, now this one is gonna be the 10 inches. And with this one, we're gonna be good to go. Honestly, the thing that take that uh, took me the longest on this project was the binding. Only because binding just just the nature of it, trying to um, getting it straight and getting it on. I didn't even do it very well. I was in a hurry with that last one. <laughs> okay. Yeah, this stuff really sh certainly breaks up a little bit. Um, let me put that one down, out of the way. I'm trying to put it out of the way. There we go. So, there we go. There's our mat, and it's ready to go. I mean, it's this is just such a, like I said, it's a quick and easy project. I'm going to turn it back over now. I do not need to do that anymore. Um, now, again, just decide which side you think is going to look the best. Um, I, I will say the one thing I've learned about these Dollar Tree mats is that often one side looks really nice and straight and the other side looks wonky. Uh, so I'm just going to sew on my wonky side, which I think is this side. Um, I'm also going to change my um, bobbin because I don't want it to show. You know, sometimes you might want it to show. I just don't want this one to show. Get it up in there. Um, so if I use a thread on the bottom that is a pretty close match to my to my um, bottom fabric it'll pretty just bear pretty much just bear okay so seriously guys this is so stinking easy um, I'm lining this up I'm actually gonna go just a wee bit this, uh, one thing to remember about some of these, this one clearly is directional, so this is going to be my orientation. This is my wonky side. This is the side I don't care whether it shows or not. I think it's the wonky side. Honestly, both of these sides are pretty good. Hmm. They're both pretty good. All right, not worried about it. So I'm, I'm just putting this on here, lining it up. I'm actually giving myself a wee bit of extra at the bottom and clearly a lot extra at the top. And right there. I'm putting one pin in. I Often I don't pin for this one. I just am because I'm gonna be doing all the way down. And I don't want to make a mess of too much of that. So let me get that piece out of the way. Get that ready. So back over to the machine. Now that I, oh, my machine's going wonky. Okay, so. 
I have to sew this way. I have a certain orientation when I sew. It's hard for me to switch it. So for this one, this is wider than it has to be, right? I'm actually okay with that because I don't want this strip to be big, if that makes sense. I want that strip to be relatively small, so I'm gonna go ahead. By doing this, I'm taking off yeah, some of that. Also, I don't really need to, um, to lock it, but I just don't. But I don't need to. Make sure that that's. One part done. This little heart piece did not really have an orientation. Oh, over here. So the little heart piece did not have an orientation, really. Oh, I'm gonna give this one a quick press. I'm gonna give it a, it, things just so better if, if they um, have a quick press. This is my little Cricut. And it heats up pretty quickly, but let's see. I didn't heat it up ahead of time. So it doesn't need a lot of press, but it won't hurt it to be a little bit flatter. For, for those of you who already sew, you know that the reason we want it a little bit flatter is that it sits better on your on your product, in your finished product. It just makes it sit better. Um, if it's got a lot of wrinkles in it, I've seen people sew with wrinkles all the time, and they must be very talented because it doesn't seem to affect their end product, but for me, it does. So I just want mine to be pretty, I think it has got like permanent wrinkles in it. Pretty flat. All right, I got that one. And since I got it out, I'm just gonna do a quick press here. Okay. Got a quick press. We are just going to line this up. Now I am going to trim when I'm done, but this is sort of, you know, you can use up all sorts of scraps and pieces and um, make it super easy. Go back over to our sewing machine and the one thing I suggest you have, and I don't have mine here right now. I thought I did before I started. It's gonna drive me crazy. Is oh I do. Oh, oh yes, 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 I do. I thought so. Is is this? I'm gonna pull you back over. I don't want to make you dizzy. I'm sorry. This is why I like having one of these little rollers around when I do this particular thing. It's because it just like it sheds, man. So this just helps me get control of that. I'm gonna put that right back there. Yes, I thought I had that. That makes me happy. Okay, now I'm put it back into my machine, put you all back over here so you can see what we're doing. Maybe a little bit more at a tilt. So I can see what I'm doing. That's always a good thing. And as I said, you really don't have to do that step. You really don't. Um, because the uh, the binding is going to be locking everything in place. I saw someone doing a how-to 
so video one day and they, you know, they, they were saying that they were still pretty new to it, but they were going to show people what they had learned and they were turning their wheel of their, um, sewing machine, but they turned it instead of turning it this way, they turned it that way. And that is a generally considered a pretty big no, no, <laughs> um, with your machines. Because it can hurt the uh, the motor. Like that. I mean, the base of our product is done. So just come back here. Get some of these. Of this off. Uh, this one. So right now I'm just trimming. Oh, I'm sorry. What I do with my. What in the world am I doing today? I'm looking everything. Okay. I need to change the blade on this, and it's driving me kind of crazy because it has not been behaving very well today. There we go. That's where it didn't do. I'll get my little handy dandy other thing out in a minute. Let me cut this piece. I should have done this one first. And the reason I should have done this end first is so I could have gotten the longest piece out of it. Tomorrow I am teaching my students about something I call conservation of materials. It's when you don't put something right in the middle and then cut it out and then make a mess of the rest of it. You that that's my that's the that's the terminology I've been using for years. Okay. Let me get these pieces out of the way. Let me grab this guy. Yeah, love it. Okay, and I'm gonna do a quick go over here. Just keep it nice and neat, okay. This is just, this is coming together. I mean, really, we've got the base of it together. I think it's super cute. I think once we get the, um, the last piece on, it's going to be even better once we get this one done. So let's, um, there, here's a step you don't have to do. Uh, but I'm I'm going to do this, and I probably I'm just not I'm not even going to change the setting on my machine. Um, I'm just going to do a quick sew around uh, to keep this um, from moving. I what I don't want to do is to uh, when I start to finalize my project. To have it kind of the fabrics shift, so I'm you know, pretty close. It's more. It's not even an eighth of an inch. I don't think. I'm just closing in. likes to shift on us. Come on. That's why I'm closing in on it. <laughs> That's why I'm kind of basting it down a wee bit so that it doesn't shift on me when I'm doing the um, final 
really fabric? Binding. I don't want it to shift when I'm doing my binding. I'm not going to do it. I'm not tacking it down. I'm not, I'm not worried about that because I'm also going to have the binding going over the top of this. So now it's pretty well together. I'm going to move that out of the way for a minute. Let's start this stuff really does get everywhere. Let's finish getting pieces off. There we go. Now... I don't have. Right. Let's see what I'm doing here. I'm just doing a quick, super quick iron. Get it kind of flat. After trying to burn a hole in my floor, I picked up the little cricket. It's a nice little iron. Um, I will say I like that it heats up quickly. I like it, you know, it's a little stand. Um, I miss my other little iron though. Okay, that was my step one. So the only thing I'm going to do with this one is I am going to fold it in half. That I don't, and I'm going to do a quick finger press on it to get it started. Oh, clever is. It's just how I do my binding. Promise I won't leave it there long enough to burn. Cricket, the, uh, the little Cricut one though, guys, it gets super hot. Really, it gets hotter than your normal iron, I think. So. I'm pretty quick. So, give this a final quick press. Make sure everything's doing what it's supposed to be doing. It's not. It'll be good enough. Okay. <laughs> wow, at least we heard that one. there. Huh. Some excitement. All right. So now I just have to decide what I'm going to do with this. Um, because I want some extra length, I'm going to start, I think I'm going to start down here. I am also going to, I think, start from the back. Yeah, I think I'm going to prefer starting from the back. That'll work better for me. So the thing that I didn't do, and I need to go back and do, one, I'm just gonna cut this off. Let me get rid of that little bit of savage. And then, gotta decide if I'm gonna do like that. Then I want this to 
to do. I'm going to do that. That's good. There's enough heat in this to make sure that we get that, give that a little press. Everything moving here today, guys. Tables, irons, I'm just making a mess. All right. Yep, that's my bottom. I'm going to start on the bottom just because I think it'll be the least visible. I'm just trying to think of where I want that to come around. I'm going to give it some room for. Now, I am just making sure I always do this funky because <laughs> I always forget that I want to go in the opposite direction because when I sew, I'm going to come. I really do. I always do this funky. No, I'm going to go up. When I sew, I'm going to go up. All right. Really doesn't matter how I do that part. I just have to think about how I want to sew it. And directionality. It's always fun. Well, a little bit of room right there. To do my binding. Okay. Oh. I am also going to change. I almost forgot to do this. I'm going to go ahead and switch back to my cream colored binding. I mean, my cream colored bobbin thread. Um, for the binding. I do not want that red. It will show all my mistakes, man. Catch it. There we go. Okay, so I've got to catch it at about a quarter inch. Yeah, I've got plenty of space there. Got plenty of space here. What's I can do? Okay. <laughs> I'm trying to get back my pedal. Got to 
Try to, I might have gone up too far. Come on. Trying to get myself, there we go. Enough room. No, that's all right. Right there. So I'm trying to stop. <laughs> Just about a quarter inch. From the end here, cut off. Then I turn. Checking. I find that my binding is more forgiving if I go from the back to front. I did not do that last stitch. Oh. Then front to back. Definitely need my binding to be forgiving. It is not my biggest strength, but I try. done with the wicked binding. <laughs> Take that piece out. Hopefully it'll all come out great. Now I'm going to do this. Oh. You can see what I'm doing. Now, I just have to decide how far down I need to go. Because I have to tuck these two in. And pull that one kind of taunt. And actually that's a little bit too much on that. Okay. Get that guy in place. Got 
I said, binding, not my strongest point. But it usually comes out looking okay. did. Okay, so my binding is around on this side. Now, oh, and the camera is wavering. Let me get rid of some of these strings. They're everywhere. I'm just going to start pulling it over and trying to get it to line up evenly. So let me pull these all the way around. Go right there. That's not too bad. I'm very critical of my binding skills. Can you tell? Well, and I also, for me, I, I am working hard on um, stopping negative self-talk. I think, I think that is a, an important skill. If you've got it, I think it's very important. Just lost one of these things underneath. because we all need to give ourselves a bit of a break sometimes, I think. Not saying I'm good at it, <laughs> but I'm trying. I'm trying, trying, trying. I want to make sure that I teach. You know, keep working on it so little Brit doesn't pick up, you know, negative self-talk from his mom. Which is, you know, a thing we are always battling at this age. Anybody else out there have a soon to be teenager or a teenager right now? Okay, how's that looking? 
Not too bad. But I'm gonna put another one down here. And I'm trying to make this if I'll be successful at it. That's not too bad. Okay. What do you think? I hope you all could see what I was doing. I wasn't paying I wasn't paying enough attention to the camera to see if it was working. <laughs> sorry, I'm so sorry. So really, it's it's just all about bringing it around, trying to get your corners to look like corners, and um, yeah, that that's really mostly what I was doing, trying to make this. Um, I always find that this part is the hardest. Um, so when I sew it, I'm going to try to be really careful with it. Um, I'll start right there. Maybe I'll just start right there. Get that part out of the way. So let me move this back over here. Uh, so you can see, hopefully, what I'm doing. I am going to try to get it right about there. I'm going to pull this piece. I'm just going to go slow. Guess it. I am not perfect. Good thing I'm not a perfectionist. Oh, I would be in so much trouble. doing this kind of binding on something so small, I find that difficult. I don't know if anybody else finds doing binding on something this small to be a bit difficult. Um, I just, I don't know, I feel like I don't have a space to maneuver. Oh golly, no, don't go off. Come on. That one kind of went off on its own little tangent there, so I'm going to have to get it back. Also, I think I do better when I pin in this respect. Because I feel like the clips are kind of in the way. Tell me what you think. How about the binding? Come on, this binding was perfect. And I think it's about to really mess up right here. Turn. How many of you do your own binding? absolutely prefer when I'm doing binding to do the self miter. I just find that so much easier. Um, but this project is so quick and simple. I'm going to go back a stitch. Oh, it doesn't want to go back. There. Um, I just found that this project is so quick and simple. It's just the 
the best thing to do is, is your own binding if it, you know, and you can. And we're done. Let's come over here and get these clips out of the way. I think next time I might just go ahead and um, use pins. I think, I'll, I think I'll, I'll like it better. But, there you go. What do you think? I'm pretty happy with it. I'm pretty happy with it. I think it came out all right. But looking at it now, I think next time I actually will um, go front to back instead of back to front. Because I think that, I think that the back actually looks um, more put together. But, I like it. Uh, let me give you a good overview of it. We have this one. Oh, oh my goodness, camera. It, I don't know why it's starting to fall. Guys, I am so sorry. I'll put my foot on it. <laughs> there. All right, the camera is losing its mind here. It's not locking in place. All right, I'm done. I'm making a mess. I'm making you guys dizzy, but I hope you enjoyed it, and um, and I hope you give it a try, and if you do, I hope you share, share what you made. In the meantime, have a great one. Cheers.